So I'm going to make this intro kind of short because the less you know, the better going into this video. I wouldn't read comments. Uh, people spoil stuff here and there. And uh, just stay up here with me. <laughs> and let's get to it. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor next to his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on a monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and walked out into the hallway. This is where the narrative part of this game picks up. Uh, so this game, it was under the scary mods, or the horror mods, if you would, for Half-Life 2. Stanley decided to go to oh, the shit, staff lounge to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself, and constantly needed support and guidance from others, so the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. Yeah, it's funny, uh, when I was looking up some scary mods, just kind of like Cry of Fear, stuff like that, this, this is one of the ones that kept being suggested, but I know that it's not scary, at least when I don't Stanley think it is. Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So what happens if I enter the door on the right? Kind of want to be a rebel for a minute. Hang on. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. What? It's like you have a choice, but you don't. Oh, this is kind of freaky. And like that, he was back on track. I'm kind of nervous because I wonder if it's scary at all. Or if it's just like the isolation that gets to you, you know? As Stanley entered the lounge, he was horrified to find not a single person here. He decided he would walk up to see his boss, hoping that he would find an answer there. The fuck? This is like some... This reminds me of that movie Moon with uh, Sam Rockwell. Where he has that computer kind of just telling him what to do. I don't know. What happens if I don't do what this thing is telling me to do? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. I don't know why I'm like freaked out. I don't want to go downstairs, you know? Maybe I'm going to see something I'm not supposed to. Oh wow, this is... Here it is. Entering his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. It was at this point that he began to feel dizzy and a little sick, and even thought he might pass out when suddenly he noticed a keypad next to the filing cabinet in the corner of his boss's office. Stanley had never seen this panel before and had no idea what combination of numbers would produce any result. In fact, only Stanley's boss knew this, since the panel withheld access to the boss's greatest, darkest secret. And so he had assigned the keypad a combination that only he could possibly know. The number of his freshman dorm number in college. One, nine, five, seven. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. <laughs> All right. Yet incredibly... 
By simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. Stanley ventured forth into the newly opened passageway. You know what I think is scary about this is... the fact that it's just quiet. You know, the isolation. I don't think anything's gonna jump out at me, but if it does, then... It's just, it's just high tension right now. deeper into the bowels of the building, Stanley had no idea where he was or what this place held. And just as he began to think he might not discover a thing, he emerged into a long room to find... Fucking, what is this? Oh, wow. Rows ...and rows of monitors. Screens with a number above it. Stanley noticed, however, that these were not random numbers but the number of employees who worked in the building, his co-workers. Even his own number, 427, had a place on the wall. But why a setup so elaborate, he asked. Was this simple surveillance or something even more? And as if in answer to his question, the wall slid open before him, revealing the ultimate truth of the situation. An enormous control panel, Stanley discovered, but not one that controlled simple machinery. Buttons were labeled with emotions. Happy. Sad. Levers and knobs controlled actions. Walking, eating, doing work, or watching TV. Every input on this device monitored not the functions of a machine, but of a human being. And the reality began to sink in. Stanley, like so many other people, reduced to images on a monitor, had been under someone's control, always at the mercy of this machine. Could this have been the only reason employee number 427 was content with his boring job? That a machine had altered his emotions to accept it blindly? He began to feel an unbridled rage, and at the peak of his anger, something happened. A spark. Stanley looked up and saw the generator overhead, still providing some small amount of power to the machine, keeping it alive. And knowing that this generator was all that kept the controls running, Stanley moved to the ladder in the back of the room and began to climb towards the rafters. Wow, okay. So this is, uh... I heard you can beat this in just like a, like 20 minutes or so, so this will probably all be one video. <laughs> Just a random, I don't know why I'm doing this kind of video, you know? The higher Stanley climbed, the closer he felt to freedom, the further from enslavement. What the hell is in there? You know, I'd be really sick if they did like a jump scare towards the end and I didn't, wasn't like expecting it, you know? I don't know what's gonna happen. Oh shit. Disable generator. Engage generator. Uh, I guess most people disable it. <laughs> Good thing I've played all the Half-Life series, you know. The fuck? Blackness. Power gone. All alone. And then... Oh shit. What? I can't fucking see anything. Okay. Woo! I was freaking out for a minute. As he stepped through the door into the fresh outside air, a feeling of liberation rushed through Stanley's body. He had seen power, he had seen enslavement, and he had destroyed it. The underling was in control now. He had found his leading role. Stanley never discovered why everyone had gone missing, nor how and when he had come under the machine's control. But it didn't upset him terribly, because he knew that this was how things were meant to happen. All he felt was a delight unlike any he had ever known before. 
Never again would he follow someone else's orders without question. Never again would anyone tell Stanley where to go, what to do, or how to feel. No more bosses. No more instructions on a screen. Stanley decides for himself now. And he stepped out into the world. And he felt the cool breeze upon his skin. And Stanley was happy. This was not the correct way to the employee lounge, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. So he turned left at the first open door and walked back in the right direction. So what I wanted to do, uh, since this video is already kind of short, I wanted to add on to it and do the different thing at the end. I want to, you know, I want to engage the generator or whatever, and I also want to try going through doors that I wasn't supposed to. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Maybe this is why everyone had left. No one wanted to be around someone as bad at listening as him. Oh, and since shit. he was walking into the middle of nowhere and thus ruining the entire story, Stanley decided that he would punish himself. So when he came to the elevator and the doors opened, he stepped inside and pushed the button to go up. Uh, what? I would punish myself. I guess I don't have a choice. I don't know what the punishing part of this thing is. I'm kind of scared right now, you know? It it, it, it kind of ended so quickly. Uh, so I definitely just wanted to uh, see what it was all about. So what's the punishment part of this? I don't understand. All right. The fuck is this? What the fuck? What the hell? It almost perplexed Stanley that he had actually gone and stepped into this metal trap. After all, it should have been no surprise that this thing would lead him to his death. But he thought to himself, this is simply the price to pay for ruining a perfectly good story. So he resigned and willingly accepted his fate, the inevitable end toward which he had spent so long stumbling. Farewell, Stanley. Jesus. This is fucking creepy, man. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator as he sent his subject down the conveyor belt and into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. All right. What? I got away! What the fuck? The hell is down here? Uh, what? So I, I can't go back that way. So I guess I'm gonna hop down here. It's a shame then that for all his work, it was such a meaningless victory for the narrator. Did he really think he would accomplish anything by murdering this disposable vessel? This is insane. So I'm so glad I like extended this video a little bit just because there's so much to explore. I thought it was, uh, I thought I was a goner, you know? Now here's more of those monitors. There's a valve right there. What the fuck is that, huh? Let's just try moving nothing? Alright then. Man, this Every is incredibly well made. Could make ...had been designed for him long before he ever set foot here. The narrator wanted to kill him. Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start. I thought that thing was going to close on me. Oh shit. Do I have a choice? 
There's no salvation for either of these two, I'm afraid. The narrator had as little power over Stanley as Stanley did over the paths that he walked. But listen to me. This story is not over. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time... All right, so uh, at this point... Uh, we've already seen what happens when you go a different route, so now it's time to go down these stairs and see what kind of crazy mind just numbing shit happens now, so. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, of admitting that he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, was it really worth taking that risk? All because he believed everyone had disappeared. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. Everyone I know simply vanishing out of the blue, there's almost no other explanation for it. And a nagging fear began to creep up in his mind. Questions that had been there all along. He just hadn't put his finger on them yet. For example... Why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Was he just walking around in circles? Where am I, he thought. And the more he found himself unable to answer these questions, the more questions continued to arise, until he came to the issue that had been slowly bawling until he could ignore it no longer. Why is there a voice in my head, dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Suddenly, every door slammed shut. No! Stanley screamed. I need to get out of here. I need to know that there's something out there. I need to know it's not just all in my head. And he screamed and clutched at his skull as the voice grew harsher and the music in the background rose higher and higher. And then, moments before collapsing to the ground, Stanley clenched his fists and screamed to anyone who might be listening, I'm not real! I'm not real! Don't believe any of it! None of it's real! And then everything went black. Holy shit! This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She got dressed went to work, clocked in, clocked out, and then she walked home. But her walk on this day was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Moments after seeing him, she would turn, run to the nearest police station and call for an ambulance. But for just a few brief seconds, she merely stood there, unable to move. The tragedy was not the death of a single person, it was that she would never know this man's story, never hear in his own words what had happened to him, or what he believed had happened to him. For to know these things would be to exist inside the head of the man himself. So all she could do was observe from a distance and pity him. But Mariella had places to be and people to meet with, very important people, whose impressions of her would affect her career and indeed the rest of her life. She stood there for only a moment, looking down at the body, and then she ran. Wow. So, all right. So what I'm going to say right now is this is one of the best mods I've played as far as the quality of it. Uh, I'm going to try another, the, the, like the next thing I'm going to do uh, is any decision I've made, I'm going to try to do a different version of it. So I will transition to when I do it again. Uh, I'm going to try and get towards the end where I actually engage everything. Oh, Stanley. You didn't just activate the controls, did you? 
After it kept you, kept you, kept you, kept you, kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself? Is that what you wanted? Control? Fuck. Stanley. <laughs> Stanley. <laughs> I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were meant to let it go, turn the controls off and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you have. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized that he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Oh, let's make it say, um, two minutes. Now, this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Go ahead, play with those controls all you like. The real controls are where I'm sitting. Did you really ever believe you held any power? Did you not think I knew what I was doing? When I erased your co-workers and turned off the machine, I was offering you freedom an escape. I didn't have to do that. I've run this story many times and I don't always set you free. Sometimes you just sit there, day after day after day, doing your job forever and then dying alone. But when I actually give you the freedom to control your own actions, it's not enough. I let you go and you trapped yourself just the same. You just weren't made to handle this sort of responsibility, I'm afraid. But you know what you were made for? Pushing buttons. <laughs> you get it now? Oh, I'm enjoying this. Tell you what, I'll throw some extra time on the clock just because I'm having so much fun. There we go. You see, I want to watch you for every long second you try to puzzle this out. After all, it should make sense, right? The timer, the nuclear detonation, the mysterious facility, it's all here. This is a video game. Except for one thing there, hero. You've got no weapon, no vehicle. You don't even know where you're going. When you saw that timer, you just instinctively started trying to find an exit, didn't you? In fact, I bet you're still looking for a way out. I bet you're clicking on everything in this room, trying to open doors or vents or something and solve the puzzle. As though this game has a solution, as though it can be won. That timer is not a catalyst to keep things moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. It's the moment when the hero realizes that despite his best efforts, he is powerless to his environment. And then he lets go. He surrenders. And he dies. <laughs> 30 seconds, Stanley. 30 seconds. Until a boom. And then nothing. No ending to this story, just you dying. I suppose you could have gotten an actual ending if you played along, but that just wouldn't have been your style, would it? Instead, you all perish knowing that the only choice you made here was to turn on that machine and to start this timer. But you won't be alone, because I'm not going anywhere. I'll be here to watch every second of your inevitable life from the time we fade in until the moment I say happily ever after. All right. Well, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, this is quite interesting. I'm not sure how many other endings you can get, uh, but I think I did all the choices that uh, you probably could make. But uh, if you want to see more like one-time videos like this or just stuff like this in the future, uh, feel free to leave a like, favorite, leave a comment on your favorite part. And uh, thank you for watching. Take it easy.